Faceless Comedy, find it by searching. Good evening and welcome to Have I Got News For You. We'd like to apologise for the recording fault in last week's episode. It should have ended like this. Good night. <laughs> Raise quizzical eyebrow. The bookies are already offering odds on as to who will be replacing Angus on a full-time basis. 3-1 John Sargent, 6-1 Stephen Fry, 150-1 Michael Barrymore. <laughs> it's got to be worth a flutter, isn't it? In the news this week, in Leeds, there are fears that a tab of ecstasy has been slipped into Thor Heard's cocoa. CIA sources reveal that the latest plan to assassinate Saddam Hussein was devised by President Bush himself. <laughs> and in a park in Nottingham, despite hitting hard times, the old magic's still there for Torvald and Dean. <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team is American comedian Rich Hall. And on Paul Merton's team tonight are comedian Ross Noble and journalist and broadcaster Andrew Neal. <laughs> yeah, I've got a feeling you're going to do quite well tonight. <laughs> well, round one, round one is the same as it's always been. Ian and Rich, what's this about? These are uh, giant winds that swept the country, reducing us to um, total impotence. That's like leaves on the line, except bigger. Um, oh, there they are. <laughs> oh, that's 21st century technology there. Um, what's happened? Their telly's been turned off, has it? They're talking to each other. Yes, this is what passes for a natural disaster in Britain. Mm -hmm. You have to have everything bigger, don't you? We have to, yeah. You can tell that it was very forceful because those people in the orange uh, vests were actually moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's going to be some extra points available here. Um, what else blew away in the storms, Ian? Um, the national rail system. Yes. <laughs> I did one of those great railway journeys in India, which took three weeks, and I reckon we were going faster the whole time than on comics. <laughs> Next time I'm going to do Charing Cross to Staplehurst. <laughs> the big journey. <laughs> There was a very good lady on our train. We'd been waiting there for all these hours, and then when we got to the station, they put on extra people to check the tickets. <laughs> so this lady said, you don't deserve our tickets, and we surged forward. <laughs> That's revolution me style. Um, what else blew away in the storms, then? There was, did anybody else hear about this? Um, I'll give you a clue. An inflatable Ronald McDonald. Is oh, it yes, an inflatable Ronald McDonald? Yes, you're right. Right, then, OK. <laughs> very quickly, though. I Ross, think we're going to win this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that one out there. It was true, it was 25 foot tall, uh, it, it blew onto a line, um, apparently it was the wrong kind of inflatable clown. <laughs> <line>. <laughs> um, what was there any other freak happenings in this storm? Bearded Third ladies point? punching people. Bearded ladies punching people, extra point, that certainly <laughs> happened. Um, <laughs> I, shall I, um, it is a different show, isn't it? I, <laughs> I don't know. It didn't the happen key. under the old regime, sorry. No, it didn't know. <laughs> well, daddy's dead. Um, <laughs> Well, the freak happening was, have you saw this, somebody found a fish in their garden? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Or a compass heap. A, oh, yep, two miles inland. A flounder. A and, flounder. And he was a flounder. And he popped it in a bucket of water and it started swimming around. He put it on the back of his bike and rode as quickly as he could to the nearest aquarium, you know? <laughs> like, what kind of weirdo sits there going, right, I've got my emergency phone line, where's the nearest aquarium? <laughs> Just in case, you know? He knew all about it, didn't he? Yes, I mean, that is quite right. Just point there. Right there. He's oh. actually a really down-market, low-budget Santa. <laughs> this is the storm that battered Britain this week. Following the storm, a fish was found two miles inland. Experts admitted they were baffled as to how the fish could have got there, as all the trains had been cancelled. 
In a panic, its rescuer phoned the local aquarium and told them, I've found a four-inch flounder free-fall Freddy the Flatfish. Good job he didn't land in Gareth Gates' garden. <laughs> Andrew, here's your first one. Have a look at this. DJ Duncan Smith there. This is the king over the water. There's uh, George Dawes there from Shooting Star. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Hogwarts, School of Witchcraft. <laughs> and somebody spiked the Parliament uh, with acid. Almost all definitely. just sort of wafting around with weird... Almost I've definitely. never taken any drugs in any way, shape or form ever. Please let me come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's any problem there. Are you a teetotaler, aren't I you? I am. Hence the water, tonight. Any reason, particularly? Well, I'm just a very dull man. <laughs> You've never been tempted? Is this what you do? You get me on the piss, and then slowly but surely you introduce harder and harder substances, yeah. and then eventually you take over every comedy job in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Is it that transparent? <laughs> I mean, it's worked out well for me, because I've got to come back two weeks running. You Absolutely. Know. And I'm actually hedging my bets, because I'm hoping to present this morning, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh... So, what was that story about? It was about the Tory, it was the Tory leadership crisis, mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. Duncan Smith is not a disc jockey, he's the leader of the opposition. And uh, he's in trouble, he's going nowhere. <laughs> Michael Pertillo came to his help because he gave an interview to ITV saying that the situation for him wasn't desperate, just very difficult. <laughs> well, you say that because uh, his approval rating amongst Tory voters, have you heard this, Andrew? Yeah, it's down to only a third of Tory voters think he's doing a good job. It's actually minus seven. 32% of Tory voters are pro him, and, but 39% are against, so he's actually minus seven. But so he, he, has, he has got the support of one crucial person. Himself. William Haig said he thought he was doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, that's the major problem that they've got, isn't it? The fact that they've kind of got rid of one bald man and replaced him with somebody that looks exactly the same. It's like, you know, in so Hang on, just so you've got all that hair flicking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the other thing, that bit in the end, was um, that MPs will now no longer be sitting at night because mm. they're going to start in the morning and finish at how, 7 o'clock. How early in the morning are they starting? Uh, oh, 11.30 is very early. <laughs> <laughs> it's also coincided the holiday to coincide with when the congestion charge comes in to save themselves like 20 quid. <laughs> it's just cheap, you know. But wouldn't you do that if you were in the position to uh, create uh, laws? No, I'd start somewhere else. Free bouncy castles for everyone. <laughs> First. This is the uh, latest news from Westminster with Ian Duncan Smith under threat and a change to MPs' working hours. According to the Daily Mail, one of the key reforms is Prime Minister's question time to be brought forward from 3 pm to noon, in time for Mr. Blair to make the lunchtime news. Or failing that murder she wrote, which is on just afterwards. <laughs> Ian and Richard, who's this? That's Winona Ryder. This is her new film where she sets free a bra. <laughs> The brides, the voices of uh, Eddie Murphy yes. and Gene Hackman. They play uh, two D cups who are bound together. And, uh, one of them, uh, is it, is one it... of them's very serious, and one is a wisecracker. That and, would be uh, Eddie Murphy, the wisecracker. Yeah. Really. Most of the uh, the voiceover is the bra out in the wilderness, and trying she... to find a uh, the the breast that killed its father. What was her defence? Did you hear about oh, this? Yeah. Great defence. Uh -huh. The defence of the shoplifting was that she was rehearsing for a role. Yes. That is the most unbelievable defence yet, isn't it? Even yeah. for a Beverly Hills court. But they haven't mentioned the name of the director or the film that she was making. What happened to all that business where people say, Objection! Isn't that what they do in American courts? Yes. Well, why did no one say, Objection! Overruled! <laughs> so does that basically mean that if you commit a crime, as long as you can somehow link it to your job, it's all right. Yeah. Like, if you're, like, murdering somebody with a hammer, if you go, oh, well, I'm a master cobbler, mm. and I was just, <laughs> I was just practicing. It's worth I mean, trying. Uh, yeah. Why isn't her trial on telly? Uh, because she does primarily films, Ian. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way she handled it, she went onto a TV comedy programme and tried to laugh it off. Never fails. <laughs> 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 Ross and Andrew, what's this? This is the Turner exhibition, I think. I don't know what that is. And I That's think just a chip shop there. Chip shop. Really fancy disco chip shop. <laughs> this was the exhibition, I think, that the uh, Minister for Culture attacked, saying it was uh, conceptual bullshit. That's right. 
That's what he said. Yeah, I heard that on the radio. I this don't morning. know what that is. I thought I don't want to hear the word it's bullshit like... on the BBC. <laughs> what? Bullshit? Don't want people saying bullshit on bullshit? the BBC. <laughs> no, imagine the word the bullshit on the BBC. Don't talk bullshit. <laughs> That's five bullshits on the BBC <laughs> so far. I'm not being personal. Um, so. <laughs> But he's including himself. Oh, I am including myself. Oh, it's just a, it's a yes. democracy as far as bullshit goes. But also, the job doesn't work otherwise, does it? No. Um, <laughs> yes, he's saying it was pathetic. Kim Howes, the culture minister, he said it was pathetic. But he wrote it on a note and pinned it to the wall. That's right. It's his favourite now, in fact, <laughs> on the turnabout. <laughs> what are the entries, then? You've, you've talked about a couple of them. What are they? It's, one was a... It was like a... a, 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 a yeah. It's just, a, it's just a, I thought if I go, uh, you're long about, enough, it was, no, you're about it, it as was articulate a, it was, as the artist. Yeah, it was kind of, it was just a, it was a... <laughs> Can I take over? It no, was no, no, writing no, I'll, on the I'll wall. tell you, it was, it was right, it was, it was... It was, it was, it was, it was, it was a, <laughs> Shut up! It was a... It was a, porno it was a no. pornographic scribbling thing called Arse Woman and Buttland, and it was... No, 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 Arse, wo Arse Woman in Wonderland, actually. Right. You see, it was a pun on Alice in Wonderland. That's a sort of artist's pun. You see, I'm a touch dyslexic. <laughs> That's lost on me. <laughs> uh, the nominees are Keith Tyson, Catherine Yass, Fiona Banner and Liam Gillick. And uh, for an extra point, what did Liam Gillick's former teacher have to say about him? He's a lovely boy. No, he said, a world that needs Liam Gillock is a sad world. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a step up from see me. <laughs> <laughs> These are the nominations for this year's Turner Prize. Arse Woman in Wonderland led one parent to complain, how are they going to keep kids out of that room? Just put the words, art exhibition on the door. <laughs> At the end of that round, let's have a look at the scores. Well, it's uh, Ian and Richard five, and uh, Ross and Andrew have eight. <laughs> round two is the tabloid headline round. Ian and Rich make sense of this. The bra's the star. There was a poster advertising the motor show, and it was yeah. a, a woman wearing lingerie, um, and it said, there are other ways to a man's heart. Um, down, down the, the M6 and off at of Junction 4. Exactly right. Which really does, I think it does discriminate against people that live underneath Junction 4. Because you'd have to go up the M6. <laughs> and that's wrong. Is this hard this? done by southerners for the first time? <laughs> if you have to go like, like M4 and then up the M5 and then cut across or M1 and then go A14. You sound like my uncle, I can get this at home. You, you can't get that at home, no, can you? <laughs> That's what the minister was complaining about. That's what the minister was complaining yeah, about. That was yeah, another of the roles on this show. A sexist ad producing yeah, but you know, unnatural say, male urges. Say what you like about her, that minister. She's a bit of a looker. No, that's not the minister. <laughs> that's not the minister. I imagine if it was. Blimey. <laughs> well, uh, for a point, how many complaints did the uh, ASA receive over this poster? None. Uh, none except the ministers. It's something between none and quite a few. Uh, Two thousand. Two. It's so, 2,000 is so close, I'm always going to give it to you, but uh, Andrew's nearer with two because it was one. <laughs> uh, it was, was rejected, apparently, because it was tasteless but not offensive. Um, but she said afterwards, oh, I only made this complaint in order to get some headlines, because what I wanted to say was there should be more women in engineering, and she thought, no one's going to report that. So I'll say, God, this is a shocking ad, and then the newspapers all went, woof. Yeah, and, and, you know, I mean, and nobody reported women in engineering at all. No, uh, but I've announced it tonight. <laughs> Let's have a round of applause for women in engineering. <laughs> Ian, what's the link with Atomic Kitten? <laughs> Atomic Kitten yes. were at the, at the motor show. Yes. And they were singing one of their um, recent hits. Yes. Um, the what? name of which temporarily escapes me. <laughs> <laughs> to advertise a new car. They launched a new MG Atomics, but you'll get a point for that. Uh, uh, Atomic? The that was, was, it was. was it named after them? I don't know. Right. Um, no, I like that. That's refreshing. Yeah. Because your predecessor always pretended he did. No, I don't know. And frankly, I don't care. <laughs> yes, this is the poster for this year's motor show, which was described as sexist by Patricia Hewitt, the Trade and Industry Secretary, who also happens to be Minister for Women and State in the Bleeding Obvious. <laughs> the tabloid press criticised Patricia Hewitt's reaction, pointing out that the advert was created by women for women. Well, so was lesbianism, but you don't hear the tabloids complaining about that. <laughs> Ross and Andrew, have a look at this. Dear Saddam. Saddam had his 
email hacked into. And it suddenly became open, so anyone can send an email to Saddam. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Which is great, because a lot of um, um, arms manufacturers are just <laughs> sending them through. <laughs> Absolutely, a point for that. Um, so the emails from the UK and US companies touting for business. I'm sure Bush must be emailing him a lot, saying, I'm All right. right around the corner. Do not dis <laughs> underestimate me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, Bush said, Saddam has the smoking gun that will produce the nuclear cloud. <laughs> well, maybe Iraq has a nuclear pistol. <laughs> they used to have a super gun that we, we sold. That we built. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That probably still works. <laughs> no, I shouldn't think so. No. <laughs> Leaves in the barrel if it was British. <laughs> Is this some like weird sequel to You've Got Mail, starring Saddam? <laughs> yeah. And he, he's and like, Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan's just typing away, you know. <laughs> oh, there's that evil dictator, but you know, there's something about him. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, this is the discovery of Saddam Hussein's email inbox, which was hacked into by journalists on an American website. It also emerged this week that half of the Army's new Apache helicopters can't be used for up to four years due to a shortage of pilots. An official report revealed that apart from the shortage of trained pilots, the Apache still cannot fire its missiles without the risk of damaging its tail rotor. It will not have secure voice communication with other helicopters. It will not be able to exchange data securely with most other military aircraft. It will not be able to operate from ships once it's armed. And a deal to supply spare parts has just run out. <laughs> but apart from all that, look out Saddam, here we come. <laughs> So, that's the end of round two, and the scores are Ian and Rich have nine, and Ross and Andrew have eleven. <laughs> Time for the odd one out round. You know the rules, one per team. Ross and Andrew, yours are John Major, Prince William, Condoleezza Rice, and Jonathan Dimbleby. Prince William's at university at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, Condoleezza Rice has got more degrees than you can shake a stick at. Uh, Jonathan Dimbleby was at Oxford. Mm -hmm. And John Major didn't go to university. So the odd one out is? Uh, John Major. John Major, yes. Um, do you want a clue? Oh. Is it, you, does is that mean it, that's that mean my way of not, telling you it's completely wrong. I re, I'm trying I to break it to you gently. I, I reckon it's simpler than that. Uh -huh. They're all touching their faces except for William. <laughs> Yeah. No, he's right. We'll have our face. points now. Don't even he's discuss touching it. His face with his points, right. with please. With his it's generally not that easy. No. Is it brothers? Is it they've all got embarrassing brothers? Mm -hmm. um, John Major had a, a brother called Terry Major Ball, yeah. who was a garden name manufacturer, mm -hmm. and he had an embarrassing brother who was Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Prince William, obviously a bit embarrassing. He's got an embarrassing brother, Prince Harry. Yes. Jonathan good. Dimbleby, embarrassing brother, David. Mm -hmm. Every time you watch the telly, there's David saying. And so, they move slowly down Whitehall. <laughs> and that's you know the trick of that, is you just use, <laughs> you use the adjective beloved for everything for royal coverage. Yeah. And so, his hand picks up the beloved glass. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a clue here. Dame Nellie Melba could have been one of these people. Oh, they've all had something named after them. That is correct. A dish named after them. Mm -hmm. Condoleezza Rice, rice pudding. Everyone knows that one. <laughs> Pear William. Um, Dimbleby Fool. <laughs> and major curried eggs. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the right area, Ian, but do you want to. Have you picked an odd one out? Okay, I'll go for Jonathan Dimbleby. Why? Or Prince Andrew. <laughs> Prince Andrew is the answer. <laughs> Prince Andrew's the odd one out because he's not there. Oh, yeah. How okay, many years have you been playing this game, Ian? <laughs> I'm going to tell you here, I think you've both got a couple of points there. Um, the answer is they've all had foods named after them, except for Condoleezza Rice, who had uh, something else named after her. For a point, anybody remember? What was it named the after? Ford Condoleezza? The new... <laughs> you would think so, because the name's exactly the same, but no, no. He's had an oil tanker named after her. <laughs> <laughs> What's a Prince William, then? <laughs> it's a liqueur. What? <laughs> a liqueur? Yeah. No, Pear, Pear it, William. Oh, isn't Pear it? William. Isn't it? Prince William. Oh, Prince William. He's, he's uh, the heir to the throne. <laughs> no, no, that's Prince Charles. He's not there either. Oh, he's. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that funny? When you say heir to the throne, you just skip one person. <laughs> well, well Prince William, <laughs> I'll tell you, Prince William is known that uh, there's two bacon rolls and a cup of tea. That's what he has for breakfast, apparently. <laughs> OK, well done. Jonathan Dimbleby has created his own brand of organic burgers, which he sells from a fast-food van. 
It's an odd career move, going from TV host to serving up burgers, but he's not the first, and he certainly won't be the last. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Rich, here are yours. Vladimir Putin, Margaret Thatcher, Edwina Curry, and Mary Archer. Uh, by Mr News, has um, Is... Lady Archer become Queen? <laughs> if so, I think I'm in for quite a long stretch. <laughs> Edwina Curry has mm -hmm. had a, a thing this week um, that the Bonfire Society are going to set fire to. Have they all been burnt on Bonfire Night, except Putin? Um, um, no. I'll give you a clue. Um, it's, uh, you might learn something. D um, they were all scientists. They were all scientists. Do you know where they studied? Well, th um, Thatcher studied at Oxford. Mm -hmm. um, Lady Archer was Lady at Cambridge. Archer oh, she was at Oxford. And no, then... She was at Oxford and then yep. now teaches at Cambridge. Oh, they were all at Oxford. Mrs. Curry was at Oxford. They were all unusually for the British establishment. They were all at Oxford. That's right. Well mm. done. And they all studied chemistry at Oxford except for Vladimir Putin, who, given recent events, um, should have. Should have, yeah. <laughs> especially, especially chemistry. Yeah, especially chemistry. Um, Edwina Curry, you mentioned earlier, what's she doing on November the 5th? She's being burnt. Right. Yep. Uh, uh, well, to make it clear, her effigy is being burnt. Oh. It's, a, it's, it's a key difference for her. So it's not a um, good news story. Then. There it is. <laughs> and if anyone's looking for far lighters, the diaries go up awfully well. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> and Thatcher's head there. What happened to her statue recently for a point? Well, it was Good. attacked. Attacked? And decapitated. Yeah. That's brilliant, that. That's like, that should win the turn of prize. That's the turn, isn't it? <laughs> because the great thing about that is you can go to an art gallery and if you're bored, you can put your own head behind it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So there should be another one with the bag open so your friend can be popping out the bag. <laughs> well, it's only a matter of time, I'm sure. How many blows did it take to knock the head off Thatcher's statue? Oh. Two. Two, Ian says. And what, what was used? Um, was it a ruler? N uh, no. A ruler? <laughs> it's I think it was, it was it an enraged teacher who was yep. furious about Mrs Thatcher for, for the last few decades. Mm -hmm. um, and he just lost it and attacked her with... Was it a cricket bat? A cricket bat and then a metal pole. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> so he walked into the gallery with a cricket bat and a metal pole. <laughs> Where is the statue of Margaret Thatcher, he asked? <laughs> <laughs> Over there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to borrow a stepladder? <laughs> You're right there, chemistry at Oxford is the, is the answer there. Following Edwina Curry's recent revelations, Mary Archer said John Major suffered a lapse of taste in his affair with Mrs Curry. That's the wife of Geoffrey Archer. To me. <laughs> On the programme a couple of weeks ago, Christine Hamilton described Geoffrey Archer as a pompous, obnoxious prig. That's the wife of Neil Hamilton to me. <laughs> So with just the missing words to go, the scores are Ian and Rich 14, Ross and Andrew 16. Yeah. Okay, missing words now. This week's guest publication, incidentally, is Heavy Horse World. <laughs> Here goes. Call me what, says prisoner? Geoffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Call me I'm at home, <laughs> says prisoner. <laughs> Call me mister. Sir, sure, mister. Call me mister. Uh, Ross said sir, but uh, Ian said mister, and mister is the right answer, yes. <laughs> Next, um, horse used to make what? Horseradish. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good answer, but it's not right. Uh, is this, um, me happy. Horse used to make me happy. <laughs> is that a personal confession? It's, uh, it's from the letters pages. Horse used to make a fortune betting on men. <laughs> I know the story you're referring to, I don't think it's that. Um, let's have a look at the real answer. Lasagna. You say, you say lasagna, and that says cheese. It's near. Next, what found in Blackpool? Fossilised remains of the cranky. Black water. Black water found in Blackpool. Yeah, good. <laughs> Primitive signs of life. Now no. you're being silly. No. Here, aren't you? no. Okay, let's have a look at it. World's rarest bird. What is it? The world's rarest bird was walking down um, Blackpool Promenade and then everybody wondered, where has it come from? It's flown from thousands of miles away, they said, and the next day they said, oh no, it's escaped from Blackpool Zoo. <laughs> we hadn't bothered to check. <laughs> um, the next one is horses to have what by 2003? The vote, vote says Tony Blair. Master unicycling. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
that's the document you need when you go travelling. Passport. Oh, passport. Passport. Ian was the first in there. Passport. That is the. They all look the same. That'd be hopeless, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, I just like going through. Getting the photograph done, and they're going to the little boobs. Going to be a bit of a trouble. Isn't it? <laughs> Ah, stick your ass in, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and finally, BBC TV host sacked in what? <laughs> Scandal? Is it monkey shaving? <laughs> oh, no Unless... one was meant to know about that. Would meant... <laughs> Have you ever shaved a monkey in anger? You know, it's not easy. <laughs> Heavy it, horse? It's... Heavy horse, good answer. Isn't it a trick? Isn't it's it a trick? It's just one of the papers doing this round, so in fact, there is just a blob. Let's have a look at that. You're right, Ian. Well done, boys. Ian, very good. So we're coming to the end of my stint here. As uh, Andrew, do you, by the way, do you fancy doing the job I'm doing at the moment? Well, actually, I've just heard in my ear that I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in the running, you know. You're in yeah, the Yeah, it's team. twenty-five to one today. How are you with Auto Q? Um, not bad, actually. Not bad. Is um, that what you get if you win? You get to come back and host the show. That's, <laughs> that's what's happening now. That's what's happening now. Well, Andrew, we've got a bit from you on reading the order key on Newsnight. That's it for tonight. Uh, we'll be back uh, next, uh, next night, tomorrow night. <laughs> to see you then. Uh, the Remember, BBC News 24 is on round the clock with news coverage. Don't miss us again tomorrow night. <laughs> then, BBC, so then, goodbye. Excellent. No. <laughs> thank, thank, uh, thank God it wasn't live. squeezing your balls. Up right? on the <laughs> I would no. like to. Ah, <laughs> that, was, that was after the program. <laughs> well, that's it. Let's see who's won then. Uh, well, Ian and Rich have 21. Uh, Ross and Andrew have 19. So Ian and Rich are this week's winners. Yes. So thanks to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Rich Hall, Ross Noble and Andrew Neil, and I leave you with news that as Gordon Brown's pre-budget speech runs over, one of his colleagues realises he's missed the all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> in London, police investigate the lightning theft of Ken Livingstone's banana. And at the premiere of the second Harry Potter movie, there are fears that the stars may be getting a bit past it. <laughs> so until next week, when someone else will be sitting in this chair, my money's on Sooty. Good night. <laughs>